days and uh, today we're going to be talking about a uh, very touching and uh, nice movie something beautiful left behind and uh, you can watch it in the docuspace org page in the full recovery program and uh, my name is Anya Vetsuk I'm a film critic and today is joining me uh, the director of the movie uh, Katrina Philp hello Hello. Hi. Uh, thank you so much for joining today. And uh, uh, so before we uh, will start talking, I just uh, I'm going to remind everyone who's watching that you can leave uh, your questions and um, on DocuSpace Org uh, page, on Facebook page and in the YouTube comment section. And uh, we're going to read them and like try and we'll try to uh, to answer all of those questions so uh and now i want to start i guess with kind of an obvious question like do you remember the moment when you decided that this is going to be your movie that you're gonna take this topic and make it into the film that this is not like a research or something like this yeah thank you so Thank you so much for having me. I'm so honored to be in this talk and to have the film on the festival. I'm very happy about that. So thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, well, um, I think um, the film started maybe some years ago. Um, uh, I think a, a seat was planted there some years ago. Um, when I was um, painfully close at losing my sister-in-law uh, and I was watching my uh, my brother and their three children um, by her side and while she was struggling with her life and keeping herself alive um, and uh, luckily she survived but it left marks in the entire family and I think at that point um, a seed was planted and um, and I wanted to explore or, or I had this interest in exploring how children um, uh, experience grief. Uh, so I think it started there in, in the powerlessness and the love for my family at that point. But at that point, I didn't knew it was uh, like I, I wanted to make a film. I was just very interested uh, mm -hmm. in this topic. And, um, and then some years later, <laughs> My producer, she um, she heard an episode on This American Life, uh, American podcast, and um, it was from a place similar to Good Grief, where we filmed the film. It was calling The Sharing Place, and uh, they were interviewing um, or making this reportage from uh, this place. And I, I just thought that it was amazing to hear how open and curious and yeah just open-minded the children were and also the uh, adults surrounding them so uh, and that just captured me uh, from the very moment I, I heard it and it was only 20 minutes but I was really really uh, into it and we started calling around and then um, very uh, fast we um, we found this place um, Good Grief in New Jersey and this Ameri this fantastic uh, CEO, Joe Primo, who just opened up his doors and uh, welcomed us and said, hey, well, just come over and uh, you can start filming right away. And we we're just like, I think two weeks later, we were at this place uh, and we were filming and we filmed some very, uh, am some very amazing, um, uh, we captured some very amazing scenes the very first day, I think. So we were just, we knew that there was a film to be discovered at good grief. So uh, basically there is like no narration in the movie. I mean, like no talking heads, uh, like telling what the facility exactly is. So it's basically a child's narrative because when adults are talking, they are not addressing the audience, they are talking to children. Why did you decide to do that? Why did you choose that approach? Yeah, well, 
it's true that we look we look we, we looked at the uh, at um, at grief from a child's perspective, and I was um, from the beginning. I just knew that that was uh, the right thing to do, um, and uh, we just to give you a little background we filmed at this place called good grief uh, in new jersey and uh, it's a place where children can come and they can um, uh, attend these group meetings um, it's a place where they can come and they can you know process their grief through play and and uh, through talking with with uh, each other so we follow around six children uh, who have all lost a parent or one of them actually lost two parents um, at these meetings, but we also follow them uh, in their homes. Um, but at Good Quiz, they have these different rooms where the children can go in and play. For example, they have this amazing volcano room, which is a, a room that is padded and very safe to be in. So here they, they can go in and give in to rage and frustrations and just if they want to, they can just scream or they can just play or because sometimes grief is also physical. Um, and, uh, and then they have this sand room with this kinetic sand that is very, uh, it, it's very nice to touch the sand. So it stimulates them in, in, in a way and, and they have a small mini figures, small, um, uh, caskets and yeah, yeah. things like that that they can yeah that they can bury the the, the small minifigures in so so uh, and then they have a fully equipped hospital room where they can go in and, and play because sometimes they have maybe been in some traumatic experiences um, and and we back to your questions about why we decided to uh, to look from the child's perspective i think it was i think there were I was so um, amazed about the children's openness and I was so, uh, I just wanted in a way to capture their wisdom. And I think that instead of listening to a lot of experts, that would be a totally different uh, kind of film. And, and that was not, yeah, that was not my aim at all to do that kind of film. I, I wanted it to look from the, entirely from the child's perspective because I thought that there was so much um, wisdom there or, or so much, um, that we are adults actually could learn so much from them. Um, yeah, and and, uh, and also because I wanted to capture this um, this play, uh, this um, wonderful uh, um, way that the children were just going in and out their grief. It was not like uh, I, I just wanted to follow the pace of grief and I wanted to follow the children and, and their pace uh, and I thought that it was much more interesting than to yeah. hear experts telling us now they are going through these kind of steps in, in you know grief uh, and I didn't really was interested in that. Mm. Yeah well that's what I think uh, too because well I guess your movie is more like about the grief as a feeling of confusion and the children they just tend to express like vividly and more openly that thing than adults so yeah i think it was uh, uh you think that that movie is like very specific but uh in a way it's more wider and like more open than than it seems to be uh and uh, i also wanted to ask like you seems to be very you seem to be very careful with kids as your as your characters as your heroes because you're you taking some time to introduce children and uh, um i was wondering how did you how did you make them used to the camera and like to your presence because it's i think it's really hard for for, for child not to uh notice some things that adults tend not to be paying attention. Yeah, yeah, but it, it actually, I think the families really quick felt comfortable having us around it amazingly, but they did. And I think, um, well, they trusted good grief and they trusted good grief for inviting us in, I think, uh, and trust is, you know, the mo most important thing when you do documentaries. Um, so uh, 
And then we actually, I actually came there not as a film crew. I came there as a, a family because I, my husband is the cinematographer of the film. And we, uh, we actually decided to, um, to move to Morristown for the last period where we were sh shooting the film the, the, for a four month period. And, uh, and we brought our two children as well. Uh, so actually we, um, from the very, I think the first trip also, we also brought our two kids. Uh, so they were, when we were filming the children, they were actually playing behind the camera. So we were having our kids there. And when we were not filming the kids, you know, uh, at Good Grief, our kids were playing with the kids from Good Grief. So. Uh, and the and the children we filmed so uh, so I think it, it it merged together with my family and um, not coming there as a film crew I think it's also helped us open the doors um, because it was very relaxed and we became close friends with the the, the children and the families that we filmed um, so we were also together with them when we were not filming sometimes so so I. I, I think that helped a lot, and and the trust that Good Grief had to us, uh, towards us, um, and I think it was only a couple of days, and then they just got used to, the, to having us around because we, uh, in the f we we filmed during a the, during a year on and off uh, from in the beginning we traveled from Denmark Copenhagen to. Morristown, New Jersey, back and forth, as you normally do when you do documentaries. Um, but then we decided actually to move there for, I think it was in March. Um, and uh, and that we, we, we did because we wanted to be closer to the children and we want to be closer to the families and we wanted to be there when they were ready to be filmed and not when we were ready to come, you know, uh, flying over from on the other side of the Atlantic. Um, so therefore we were also there a lot. I think we were there maybe three um, days a week. Um, and they just like, we were just a part of good grief. Um, and actually also um, during the filming, um, my dad also became sick and he died. Uh, and it was very unexpected. So it was a very, it was a very big loss for me, um, and um, and uh, and I think that coming there and also me and my family were in, in, were also grieving, and we were in a way just um, a part of good grief as as well, and we were also like standing in the in the circle in the beginning and. And uh, yeah, so I think we, we were very much um, a part of the whole Good Grief community and the family's lives and, and uh, everything merged together. And, and, and I've, I think that the children felt that we were, um, yeah, that, that we, were, we were just friends. Uh, so so they, they, uh, they uh, in a way, just welcomed us. And, and, Adam is very, my husband, who is the cinematographer, he's very good with the uh, people in general, but also children. Um, he also lost, lost his mo mother in an early age, uh, but he, he's just like crawling around with the kids on the floor and, and having them crawl over him and look at the camera and touching it and uh, uh, play with it. And so, uh, so yeah, they, they just thought it was fun. And that was very important for us because I, I would never, you know, pressure them to be in the film or that was very important for me that they had this space uh, and they, that um, we only would film them when they were really comfortable having us or that we, mm. uh, because it, it was of course putting a lot of extra pressure on a family uh, that was in grief, you know, and some days are good, some days are bad and you never know when you, uh, really can open up your doors and, and let a film crew in um, you never know what um, how how you know um, mm -hmm. how the day will be uh, so so being that flexible 
with the moving there was very very good for the film i think yeah and um i was also thinking about this uh, hard moments you were telling about um i even thought about it like maybe in a more ethical way and i wanted to ask you because there are there are some things in the in the film uh when like you're filming uh, at kids who are crying for example who are having this very like very tense moment uh, and maybe they are not even realizing that you are filming them and you can clearly see as a viewer that this is a tough moment and it, be it becomes very tough for you to watch it and how how was it for you to film it um actually i think the entire film was an extremely uh, good experience. Uh, I, I really um, enjoyed every moment. Uh, and even though it's hard to watch and it's hard to film, sometimes it's it's all it always it, it also gives you so much. Um, and the thing, and, and the, I just met these incredible, brave and fantastic children there. And I was so amazed how resilient they they were and how uh, um, yeah um, cl clever and how fantastic uh, they were and um, um, and I think also when you are when you're grieving yourself grief is not a taboo um, it's it's not a taboo to talk about death or or the, the the family members that you have lost if you had if if you're there um and that openness uh, i really felt a good grief and i felt and that was also why the ceo and and and, and the entire good grief wanted to be portrayed in a film like this because they wanted it to be not to to be a taboo it, it, they wanted it to be like um um, something that we could all talk about, that we should all share our feelings, our emotions, and 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 not be afraid of talking about grief and death. Um, and and I think the the children are are showing us the way in this film. Um, mm -hmm. And they in they have this amazing. Um, they want to they they want to give back in a way, or they want to you know they have experienced something very crucial to them. Uh, but they. But what I think was so yeah also so fantastic was that they wanted to um to help other people in this in a similar situation as themselves and even though they were very small kids they actually have had this um empathy empathy yeah, yeah. Uh, and 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 that was so beautiful and i think i felt that we were making this very important film uh, so um and i think most of the situations um was very beautiful actually it was much more for me much more about life and much more about continuing living your life um trying to live your life with having this uh, enormous grief in, inside of you because good grief was it, it grief is not something that you should get over grief is something that you should learn to to live with uh, mm -hmm. because it, it is something that you will keep inside of you from your entire life um, and and that was also good grief mission it, it's not because we want to you know cure them for grief or anything like that they just wanted to um, help them um, and, um, uh, and 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 give this peer-to-peer -peer contact so this um, mm -hmm. feeling of connective Ness in a way, but there were some situations where I really afterwards was, um, yeah, uh, heartbroken, of course, uh, when filming this film. Um, and it was always like, um, I always had to uh, uh, balance when we could film. Mm -hmm. But I think it, 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 it came very natural in a way because this film is made entirely from, you know, from your gut feelings and using your emotions to to really or, or using yourself really to uh, navigate in this. When should we, you know, withdraw or 
a go back a little bit with the camera? When should we just turn it off? When when would we, when is it okay to film? And and you can actually you can actually feel that in in the room very uh, um, very much. So so uh, and, and and Adam because he's also my husband and we have made a lot of films together. We have this kind of almost invisible um, collaboration, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. So we 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 uh, we sense the room and we sense the children very uh, very much and 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 we know when when we should like uh turn off the camera but and i think it was only one time we uh, where we decided okay now we just need to turn it off it, it's you it, it's like a dance in a way when you do documentaries you mm -hmm. because you you never know what will happen around the corner you never know how your protagonist will um how he or she will react uh, um, in the in the next moment. So you'll just have to f to you know feel where they are and then like in a way dance with them. I think um, so. It's very easy actually to to know when to 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 move move back a little bit um, when you have your senses like out <laughs> in the room and and you sense the room and you sense your characters and you know them. Uh, and uh, because for us it was so very important to just um, be uh, film this film with uh, huge respect um, and uh, and, uh, and and uh, and and not pressure them too much. Mm -hmm. And I think we managed that because they all had a very good experience. Also, when they are children, you you need you need I. I I don't know, but I need that they, it is a good experience for them too to be in the film um, mm. and, that, and that they wanted it. And they all the way thought it was very fun, I think. And they love the film now, so um, mission's complete, I think, <laughs> with that. Um, so I read that uh, the film was previously called An Elephant in the Room. So uh, why did you change the title? Yeah. Um, well, everything happened very fast with the film, um, with the, in the post production, uh, and and we were actually not when we finished the film. Very, uh, we we didn't like the the title that much, but we couldn't find another one that would at that point that was better. Uh, and and we had this premiere at South by Southwest, so we just needed to get the film finished uh, and, and uh, so everything happens very fast and I and, and afterwards we uh, we found out that um, we still didn't really like the title of the film so uh, so we thought that okay maybe we could change it now <laughs> and and I think beautiful something left behind is something that is said in the film in the in, in, in the end of the film and it captures very much the um, the way that the film is uh, the, the, the autonomy of the film, I think, because an elephant in the room is 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 more um, more something about how the um, society is looking at grief, how the society is re reacting towards people that are grieving. Uh, mm -hmm. So it, it's it's not a, a personal. It's it's not the it's not from the child's perspective. So in a way it was a little bit because the film are not judging anyone. It, it's not that it's looking, it, it's not about an elephant in the room because at Good Grief, there's no elephant in the room. Every, you know, the, the children can talk openly. They, they talk openly and freely about uh, mm -hmm. these uh, very uh, hard feelings they, uh, and emotions. Uh, so uh, so um, yeah so we decided beautiful something left behind and i think it's also a bit it's also more poetic uh, and it's also more like um how the film actually is so yeah and well actually that's that the point because i thought about uh, like the message and things you previously said 
we don't really talk about death in our country and well it's still considered like impolite and it makes people uncomfortable uh do you feel like you have this thing in your country and uh, uh is it the way for you to address the problem um i think in in denmark it's it's also very it, in denmark it's it's very difficult to talk about um grief um and uh, and 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 why we um also why we we uh, we did the film in the uh, we made the film in 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 the state was that they had this um they do it in a different way they have a, a more i think holistic way of uh, dealing with grief or looking at grief or um and um because it's it they they in denmark it's it's more like um conversation based uh, therapy and they do not have these all these fantastic rooms where the children can go in and they are not like um they're not um, yeah they're doing it in, in a very different way and i think we in denmark are very private too uh, and i think a lot of a lot of countries are very ha uh, feel sometimes feel the same about this that grief and uh, talking about difficult uh, difficult um, emotions is very is very hard and uh, and it's kind of a taboo in many countries and i also actually think that many americans think that they're talking about deep feelings and are uh, uh, kind of something that you are not really uh, doing much or uh, uh, that you're afraid maybe of uh, asking if somebody is okay because you may be afraid of the answer that you will get um so that's also why I, I wanted to do this film i wanted to to um i wanted to work with this uh, uh to to uh, make us all braver when we encounter people who have who have lost um someone in in their life um yeah so i think we could all be much much better to talk about our uh the, 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 the difficult emotions or difficult uh, times that we have um and help each other and be there for each other um and i think also with this pandemic we we we, we had the feeling of this collectiveness that we are all in a way grieving the entire world is is grieving in a way and 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 we have found out that this uh, feeling connected is very important for us human beings um and and that we and that we actually need to to talk about these difficult feelings uh, a lot of people have really had a very hard time uh, this year um and i think it's um this film is reflecting in a way very much what how we need to be uh, um, in order to to uh, manage uh, this stressful a stressful period like this or, or other stressful periods in our lives um, yeah, and yeah like, uh, sorry do you feel like this movie actually changed you and maybe changed your attitude to grief um i think so yeah actually um because, because i was actually i was going to ask you but really carefully about uh, the thing that this movie was dedicated to your father but you mentioned it by yourself like without asking so i feel like i feel like yeah you've been influenced by your movie too because you're kind of free to express it yes very much actually um uh, I, i'm i i i think that uh that the ch children have inspired me so much really and uh, both their resilience but also the way that they just navigate in the in the in the big crisis like like losing a parent 
um, that they just think that they can go in and out of feelings one moment they can be happy and one and the other the other uh, moment they can be very sad uh, and I think that is a very that is very pure that is very true to how grief is uh, and how you feel grief as a, a, a mother in the film said in the in the in the, the film that grief is like waves and it's something that something sometimes you're up and sometimes you're die, down uh, but i don't think that we as adults are so good both at talking about our feelings but also at like just be present uh, and i think that is what we can learn from the children and what i've learned from the children also because i you know at the when filming this film i was in a very deep crisis myself and and i really felt that this film helped me in many ways that it was kind of a therapy for me too both to uh, to meet the the other families in at good grief and to coming there with my family and actually also just allowing myself to be sad and allow i feel that it was okay uh, because good grief is this amazing community where you can just go in and you can just relax and you can just be sad or you can just like be happy or whatever and everything is welcomed uh, and, and everything is right uh, because grief is also very different from person to person um, and I, I felt that it that it comforted me in a way and also that I could actually use all my energy and all my time um, uh, with just going into grief and and uh, um, and that I felt very fortunate, fortunate actually, that I had the film to lean on in a way uh, while I was struggling myself. And and at the moment, you, even though I was not losing a, a dad in a young age, uh, it was still something that was very difficult for me. Um, but I also could comfort myself and think that, that I have had an entire life with, with my dad. Um, and, and these children, they didn't have the possibility or opportunity to, 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 uh, to have their dad or mom um, in, in their lives. And uh, so that's also made this very, um, I don't know, more, the importance of the film was very, uh, uh, yeah, it was, it was a film that was very close to my heart and, and uh, it is, still a film that I think is very, uh, it's very important film. Um, and I have heard so many people that have maybe lost in an early age or, or people that have experienced grief of just people <laughs> that they feel that the film is kind of a cathartic journey for them, like a healing journey. And, and that makes me uh, so happy because that was actually what I wanted with the film, that I wanted it to be this cathartic journey. I wanted it to be this healing journey while you're like processing your uh, uh, like going through while going through the film that you process something in your in, in yourself and that uh, and, and that you um, and that you feel that uh, you've been on this journey uh, in the film and in yourself also so so it was kind of a yeah a healing journey that's that's what I wanted, and that what that is what I also felt uh, it was for me to make the film. Mm -hmm. um, well, actually, what was like the biggest challenge with this project, and also the moment that was like most rewarding to you? Um, mm, I think uh, in the beginning, the biggest challenge for me was. Uh, that I had to go back and forth during the filming um, because I felt, you know, I, I, I really felt that the, I, when I was at Good Grief and when I was in the home of the families and I felt very close to them, but at the moment I left, I felt very much uh, 
you know, apart from them, um, and the and, and I really felt um, the distance uh, from Copenhagen to uh, to uh, to Morristown because also because they were so small, some of the children, um, and a month for them was very long, and uh, I couldn't come, you know. I couldn't be there. I couldn't come back and forth. We we needed to finance the film as well, <laughs> so uh, so that was really difficult, I think, for me, uh, and and that was also why I decided that we should move there, um, because I I felt that this we had to do this, we had to have this uh, continuing film filming with the children, um, even though we didn't have the finance in, in place at that point, and I think my producer was a bit. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I don't know. She, she was uh, saying, "Okay, well, we have for one month, and you want to stay for? Okay, we'll just work hard the next month to get the the, the financing." And we managed just uh, <laughs> just in time, but it was uh, yeah, it it, it yeah. was the uh, challenge. Uh, and then I think actually. Filming the film was just joyful in any way. Uh, it was, uh, I was so happy about all the families in the film and we had a great uh, experience with them. We, had, we became friends with them. Um, and also you could say, maybe it was a challenge that my, I lost my dad uh, while I was filming this film. But in a way, I also see this as something uh, uh, that helped me in many ways. So, and um, of course, I, I, I uh, uh, of course, it was a challenge, but it was in a way in a good a, a good challenge. So, from the very beginning to the final to the final film, I think it was it was a quite easy film to make. And I know it sounds odd, it sounds crazy because it's a film with this topic um but easy in that sense that it was made entirely from with my emotions with my feelings and through my gut feelings i, I used my gut feelings so much when I, I, I did this film it was very uh, intuitive film and and that was uh, amazing actually mm -hmm. uh, we, we also with uh, with my editor i I always, uh, we, 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 every day we talk about uh, navigating through the film and, and we talked about how you, uh, if, if this thought, uh, if uh, the clip or what we were viewing felt um, pure and sincere. And so we were always like, uh, it was, it is not a film that is made in your head. It is not a film that is made out of a filming structure or anything like that. It's just actually, what would we like to do now? Where, where do we feel that this film want to go? So I was listening very much to the film and, and to my participants. Uh, and I really felt that this is, a, this is a way that for me makes very much sense as a filmmaker to do it like this. Yeah. Just to be there, be present, be there, really, you know, really capture your, uh, capture the moments, chasing the moments, just uh, really uh, t bring your family, uh, bring your kids and make them, you know, have them play, you know, behind the camera, or, like merging so much together with your entire, um, in, entire uh, uh, um, participants and, and the plays a good grief and everything. So, I think it's kind of a big melting pot. <laughs> Everything's, uh, yeah. So of course there were challenging times, but um, it was also something that I thought was a force in the film. I think. And uh, I know the film was supposed to, to premiere at South by Southwest. I mean physically. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you still had this like virtual screening. But still, uh, did you had uh, a chance to present it to the audience? No. <laughs> oh, it's so it's really sad because uh, South by was actually the first festival big event I think that was cancelled. Uh, we were actually on our way to the airport uh, while um, 
yeah, just a couple of days before. Um, oh, oh, yeah, we were. I think it was only a couple of days before going to the airport that they cancelled the festival. So, and we were about to meet with all the participants and, you know, the crew was also coming and everyone was, yeah, we should have had this great premiere and meeting the audience. And that is what is so sad with this year festivals. I, I am so happy that a lot of festivals are online. You are online and it's great that the film can get out to uh, to uh, to our, all our um, uh, audience but but it is very very sad that you as a filmmaker do not interact with your audience have this possibility to uh, yeah interact and to talk and to meet them and discuss the film and and also to to have this collective experience in the in the in, in the theater where you are with your participants and with your crew and with the you know the audience and look at the film on the big screen it's uh, oh it in a way i feel that the film is not out yet but it has been traveling festivals <laughs> this entire year uh, so yeah um, that is sad. The only one who has seen the film in in the cinema or in the theater is actually my daughter's uh, class uh, because we had this technical test <laughs> just before going to uh, Texas to South by, uh, and I invited uh, her, her class to come, um, and they were so excited about the film. And we at that point we didn't knew, you know, it was only a week before this pandemic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> came uh, so so everything was good and uh, the film looked good but if you know I knew if I knew that it was the only the only day I had to you know could, could see the the film on the big screen I would have um, maybe enjoyed it a little bit more than just looking at technical stuff <laughs> but uh, a bit aware <laughs> yeah exactly yeah, <laughs> yeah. and uh, uh, have you shown it to the families? Like, have have they seen it already? And what yeah. do they think about the film? Yeah, I, I, you know, that is always something that I look so much forward to, and also something that I'm, that we as filmmakers probably a lot of us are a bit nervous about because this is, can they, you know, can they see themselves in the film? Uh, do they like the film? Uh, and. Uh, so it is very, it's something that is very important for me that I watch it together with my participants. And I always want to do that. Uh, but in this case, it was not possible. And so uh, they have all watched the film also before it came out. Um, but, and, and everyone really loved the film and Good Grief really loved the film. And I cannot wait to have, you know, to go there and have a screening where we can all meet and we can screen it together in the theater. Uh, and we will definitely have that um, because I really miss that. Um, uh, and yeah, but but uh, they are all very, very happy about the film. They really, really, really like it. Uh, they love it. <laughs> and um, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's just nice and um i was thinking about the thing that um the sense of responsibility that you kind of have after making a movie about your like about people you were filming and i think this is only in a documentary filmmaking and do you feel that way do you feel this kind of resp responsibility for them now and do you do you kept in touch with the families yeah, I'm still in touch with the families, and um, and I, I, it has been a tough year for for them because um, good grief uh, has been closed in a way that it it has been online. Uh, they have met online, uh, but it's not at all uh, what you need when you are in a crisis like this. Then you need to be together physically, of course. So it has been a very tough year for. For many of the fam families, a good grief. Um, 
but Coach Grief has really managed it very, very well. I think uh, they have tried to, to get people together in these online sessions so they still feel that they have this community that is so very important for them. Um, mm -hmm. But it, uh, it, it, it of course is very, because when you, are, when you are grieving, you can feel very isolated and very sad and very alone. And uh, with a pandemic like this, it's of course uh, getting much more challenging when you have to stay yeah. alo home uh, alone or in your very, very, uh, in your family that is maybe a little, maybe small uh, because you have, you know, the, um, because you have lost some in your family. And, and um, so I know it has been a very big challenge for the families, um, but still they are doing okay, I think. They are, they are still, um, I'm, I'm not sure that a lot have changed since we left, uh, because at that point, of course, they have, there's a lot of things that have changed in them, but, um, but they are still, as we talked about earlier, they are still living with grief. Um, and they are still grieving and they are still, um, uh, but they also, you know, still just uh, living their lives and, and they are managing it very well, I think. And they also did that when we were filming. So mm -hmm. they were going in and out of emotions and they still do, I think. Uh, but in general, I think they are all very happy, happy and and balanced and on right track. Yeah. So um, we, we're about to end our conversation, but still we have one comment from a person that were listening to us. It's not, it's not a question, more like a comment, so I just read it. It's from Irina Sakhno. Uh, there is a center for family treating their children for oncology in Ukraine for 12 years. They come from different parts of Ukraine and live there for free. And what the author is talking about, uh, Zaporuka Charitable Foundation, is implementing. We adopted about 1,200 families during this period. It is very nice that such films have been made. The children call this center Dacha, which, is, which means uh, summer house. And it sounds also as something good and warm. That's to the author for covering such an important topic. That's for you. Thank you. And well, there's not not much add from me. Uh, I I would only thank you, and uh, I hope to see your film in many other festivals uh, physically, so you can have your audience uh, participants and. Uh, Thank you so much for making this film and uh, good luck with your next works. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Anna. It was a pleasure. <laughs> Thank to you, you, everyone, for watching, and that's about it. <laughs>